Unlike Raycast in 3D, today Raycast returns a Raycast hit boolean value which contains information about the collider it hit and the distance it took to reach the. In Unity documentation there you can see a min depth and max depth value which you can't find in 3D Raycast. We will be discussing what are those in a moment. But before that, if you want to learn more about normal Raycast, I have created a video exactly explaining that. Link will be in the description below and in the iCard. After watching this video, you will learn about Raycast in 2D and its uses in a 2D platformer game. With that said, let's dive into some implementation stuff. Ok, here in the project, I have set up a 2D platformer scene. There's a queen and a monster trying to kill the queen. We're going to implement two things. First we're gonna add a character controller script which contains code for jumping. Then we're going to optimize the jump using Raycast. So that the character doesn't jump from the air and go to infinity. So first let's implement that. Add 2D colliders to our queen, the ground she's gonna walk and to the monster. We also need to add a rigid body 2D to our queen so that it will use physics. You can test this by dropping the character from a small height, it'll fall into the ground. Alright, now make a C-sharp script and open it in Visual Studio. First, let's make a quick character controller. There are a lot of videos and resources out there about 2D character controllers. I'm writing a simple character controller here. For that, we need a float value called move input and a speed value. I'm making a serialized field to control the speed from the inspector. Next we need a rigid body 2D called RB and I'm assigning this in start function. Cool. Next is movement part. Delete update method and make a fixed update method. Inside that I'm taking the axis horizontal value into move input and giving the rigid body a velocity vector with its x being the multiple of speed and move input. Move input will go from minus 1 to 1 according to key press. It's a simple script. You can use this or use any other character controller for your platformer. Ok, now comes the real stuff. Let's add jump to our queen. For that, make an update method and type if input.getKeyDown in brackets keycode.space. Inside the if statement, set the velocity of rigid body to up and multiply it with the jump force. Don't forget to make a serialized field of float jump force. Save that, get back to unity and give a float value for example 5 in jump force. You'll have to adjust the mass and gravity scale according to your needs. Now hit play. Now you can see when I hit the space button the queen jumps. But if I hit the spacebar faster, then the queen starts flying. To fix this, we need Raycast. We'll check whether the character is grounded or not to decide we need to jump or not jump. For that, make an empty game object called Ground Ray. We will initialize Ray from this object. Place it right below our queen. Make sure the object is outside of the queen's collider. Now get back to the script. Make a public game object called ground ray object and make a bool value called jump on. Make jump on false in start function. We will activate jump on if the jump on is true. Now we need to make jump on true and false according to the position of the queen. For that make a ray physics 2d dot ray cast. In the brackets give initial position, the position of ground ray object and the direction. You can also give distance value, but it will work if we didn't give distance. This will return a Raycast 2D object containing the information about the distance and the collided objects. So assign this to a Raycast hit 2D variable, I'm calling it hit ground. Now let's draw a ray to understand what's happening in the scene. So type debug.drawRay, give initial position, direction multiplied by hit distance. And lastly, color. I'm giving it red. Save that, get back to Unity and assign the ground ray object in the inspector. Don't forget to make this ray object a child of our character. Now hit play. As you can see when I jump, there's a red line appears under the character. Everything works fine. 
Now get back to the script and type if hit ground dot collider not equal to null. Inside the if statement make another if statement hit ground dot distance less than or equal to 0.2. This 0.2 value is suitable for this character. You can experiment different values as you need. But this won't differ from 0.2 or 0.1 much. Make jump on true inside and in else make jump on false. Now inside update method make an if statement if jump on equal to true then put jumping code inside and in else return. Save that get back to unity and hit play. There you can see the character is only jumping when it's grounded. Alright. Next we're gonna add a vision to our character for detecting whether the enemy is near or far from the character. So that both the character and the enemy can move to attack state. For that make an empty game object called obstacle ray object and place it right above the character. Now place it under our character and now get back to the script. Make a serializable field of game object called obstacle ray object and in update method let's write code for raycast 2d. Yeah you guessed it physics 2d dot raycast. In brackets position of the obstacle ray object right direction and I'm multiplying it with the vector 2 with character direction in x and 0 in y. It's for determining which direction should the ray hit according to the movement of the character. For example, we will make character direction minus 1 when the character moves left and the ray will project to left direction and vice versa. We will do that in a bit. Now complete this ray cast. Next give a distance which the ray should go. I'm typing obstacle ray distance here and initializing that as a serialized field of float value. I'm also initializing character direction as a private float and giving it a value of 0 in start function. There is our ray. Now just assign it to raycast hit 2d variable. I'm calling it hit obstacle. Then type if it's not null debug.log enemy detected attack mode activated and in else no enemy. We can also draw ray here. Type debug.draw ray starting from obstacle ray object to the right multiplied by obstacle ray distance and direction vector. Also give colors to the ray. Same in the else statement except the color. Give green here. Next in update method let's decide the direction. For that type if more input less than 0 character direction is equal to minus 1. If it's greater than 0 character direction is 1 and in else character direction is 0. Save that get back to unity and assign this obstacle ray object in the inspector and give obstacle ray distance a value. I am giving it 5. Now hit play. As you can see when I reach near this enemy the color turns red and if I am far from him the color is green. And the console also says enemy detected. There are three parameters left in documentation. Layer mask, min depth and max depth. Let's try layer mask. Make a public layer mask I am calling it layer mask and add it to the obstacle raycast method. Save that, get back to unity, then you can see a drop down layer mask menu in the inspector. Let's make a new layer called enemy and put our enemy in this layer. Now hit play. There you can see the raycast is not hitting our enemy. Try assigning the layer mask to enemy. There you go. You can customize which objects your raycast should hit by doing this. Remaining parameters are min depth and max depth. Those are two float values you can give to the raycast. They are set coordinates in which the raycast only hits objects within these limits. You can serialize it and give values in the inspector. That's it. That's your 2D raycast in Unity. Links to the documentation and project files are provided in the description below. As always like, comment, share and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video.